Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, are you ready for us to call for that daily bread? Release your faith in your words. Believe that what you're about to say will surely come to pass. Yeah. So the request you're about to make, it will come to pass. Are you ready? Join me right now and declare, say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Glory to Jesus. Praise God. Now, we are talking about Jesus being the light. He's the true light. He says, I am the light of the world. Praise God. And I've been sharing with you anything that is not from him is darkness. So I got talking to you about how familiar spirits operate and, and all those things. And, and please take note of these things. People have become oppressed because they attended a meeting. People's destiny have been torn because they were affected by things like this. That's why I had to bring that to light. And I pray someone is helped. Praise God. All right. So I, I, we're looking at the scripture, Jesus, what Jesus said in, in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 19. He says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures here on earth where moats and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. And I began to tell you that, hey, it's a command that Jesus gave. And Jesus knew that the Holy Spirit will visit, will come and teach us the truth and the wisdom about this command. You remember John said his commandments are not grievous. You see that now? Why did he say his commandments are not grievous? He says, because whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So first and foremost, his commandments are not grievous because we are born of God. Now, when he says you are born of God, he is referring to our lives being run by the Holy Spirit. Because everyone who is born of God has the Holy Spirit in him. You cannot be born of God without the Holy Spirit. Are you getting it now? So his commandments are not grievous because we have the Holy Spirit living in us. So what does the Holy Spirit do? He is the one that begins to teach you how to keep his commands. When you look at the commands from a distance, you're like, ha ha. You look at this, for example, like, I mean, come on now. Jesus is just sentencing all of us to a life of being broke. Because now Jesus is saying we should not have bank accounts. Jesus is saying we should not lay up treasure. What does it mean lay up treasure? If we shouldn't make any investment here on earth. Is that what Jesus is saying? You see now? I mean, Jesus cannot be that wicked now. Or someone said, mm. No wonder. Hey, remember the rich young guy that came to him? He told him, go and sell everything you have, give to the bank, come and follow me. Jesus does not like people that are rich. Uh-huh. I told you. First, you must have treasure to lay up before you start talking about where to lay it up. And I explained to you that he wasn't talking about laying up building buildings in heaven so that when you get to heaven, you have a big, big mansion to live. No. What was he referring to? First and foremost, I said, you must be open to the Holy Spirit who will guide you into this truth. Jesus said he will guide us into all truth. So this is one truth that you need the Holy Spirit to guide you in. So Lord, how do I lay up treasure in heaven? Aha, uh -huh. that's a good place to start. For your own life. Now, thank God for um, people who have walked with the Lord. Now they can give you an idea. We can give you an idea based on the things that we have learned from the Holy Spirit. 
but that our idea and experience should not stop you from going to him personally. Are you getting what I'm saying? So now, here is, here is what the Spirit of God has taught me. And I believe several people who have, who have walked in the light of this. Okay. Now, he didn't mean that you should not have anything on earth. What he's saying is everything you have on earth must come from heaven. <laughs> okay. Oh, calm down. Praise God. Calm down. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right. I said, what this means is the source of everything you have on earth must come from heaven. He says you can lay up treasure in heaven. That's to tell you that we partake from heaven. You see that? He didn't say lay up treasure in the spirit. He said lay it up in heaven. So you first of all must recognize that you have a safe deposit in heaven. You have a deposit bank in heaven. You don't lay it for the sweet by and by. You lay it to use it here on earth. Jesus didn't say, keep your money in heaven so that when you go to heaven, you have it there. No. He said it's safer. That's, a, that's the summary of the statement. It is safer to keep your money in heaven than here on earth. Now, why do you keep, why do you intend to keep money here on earth? The in intent is that you will spend it at the time you need it, right? So the same way when you keep it in heaven, the intent have not changed. The intent is that when you need it, it will come intact. No moat have destroyed it. No rust has affected it. No thief have stolen it. Are you getting what I'm saying? So Jesus was saying it is safer to save your treasure in heaven. Now let that sink. This is the light telling you something. So now, how do I lay up my treasures in heaven? Let me show you something in Matthew 19. Jesus speaking in Matthew 19 verse 21. He said, Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. Mm. Now you know the story. This was the rich young ruler that came to Jesus. And he says, what do I do to have eternal life? And Jesus said, you know the law, keep it. He said, I've kept it from my youth. And Jesus looked at him and loved him. And then Jesus said to him, all right, if you want to be perfect, now get that. If you want to be perfect, if you want to be perfect, go sell, I couldn't go sell everything you have. Give to the poor. Then he says, and you will have treasure in heaven. If I want to be perfect. Remember the question? <laughs> I, you remember the question the guy asked Jesus? Let me read from verse 6. 16, sorry. We're reading Matthew 19, from verse 16. Now behold, one came and said to him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? The focus of this question is eternal life, right? I want you to get it clear. Mm. So Jesus went all the way. And then he said to him, If you want to be perfect. Now what did Jesus mean by if you want to be perfect? Remember the guy's question. 
if you want to have eternal life if you want to be perfected now when you mean perfected if you want to manifest eternal life that's what jesus was talking about if you want to manifest eternal life yes sir all right go sell everything you have give to the poor yeah when you do that yeah let me put it in the right context you are going to be transferring your wealth from here earth to heaven if you want to be perfect if you want to perfectly walk in eternal life okay sell what you have give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven mm. yeah you know now 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 we thought we thought Jesus was trying to get this guy to be broke. That's what we thought. No. Jesus Jesus was only trying to help this guy save his money properly. Not only save his money properly. Haya nanataya. You know this 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 statement and this meeting Jesus had with this man sparked off some thoughts from his disciples. <laughs> and Peter. Because the man didn't understand what Jesus said, and he went away sad. And then Jesus made certain statements, and then the disciples now looked at him. Peter spoke up and says, Then Peter answered, this verse 27. Then Peter answered and said to him, See, we have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? Because Jesus said, It is hard. For a rich man here on it. Now you can read this thing yourself, but I want to pick out um, the important aspect. So Peter said, We've left all and we'll follow. What do we have? Look at what Jesus said, verse 28, Matthew 19. So Jesus said to him, I shortly I say to you that in the regeneration, Take note of that word. In the regeneration, now this is the light speaking. So there is truly what is called the regeneration, right? In the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, so we will see the Son of Man sit on his throne of, 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 of sit on his glory, on his throne of his glory. You who have followed me will sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. <laughs> Hold that thought there. Verse 29. Remember the question Peter asked him, we have followed you. We have left all to follow you. What shall we have? And Jesus said, you who have followed me, see what will happen. Then verse 29. And every one this goes beyond those of you now that have followed me. Everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. Now Luke, Luke clarifies the statement when he says we'll receive here, here on earth. Luke 18, let me show it to you. Luke 18, Luke 18 verse 29. So Jesus said to them, as shortly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or parents or brother or wife or children for the sake of the kingdom who shall not receive many times more in this present time 
and in the age to come, eternal life. Now, 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 hold on. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, when you look at this statement and how it ended, you see, and in the age to come, eternal life. Now, that was a misconception. Matthew didn't say in the age to come. But Luke wrote this thing down to clarify something that Matthew said. And what's that? Jesus actually said we received in this life a hundredfold and eternal life. Now, because the reasoning of eternal life is life after this world. That's the reasoning of eternal life. But eternal life simply means the God kind of life. Now, what does it mean, the God kind of life? The way and the force by which God lives, the force by which God exists. You see that now? So when the man asks, how can I receive eternal life? He wasn't talking about living after here, you know. The truth about eternal life is, it is the force of life by which God exists. So when Jesus said he will receive eternal life, he wasn't saying when he dies, he will go to heaven and live eternally. eternally. No, that's not what Jesus was saying. What Jesus was saying was he will begin to operate by the same force that God is existing by. Did you get that? He will begin to operate by the same force that God is existing by. Now, here's the wisdom in all this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm. When you move your treasure from here to heaven, and how do you move it? That's why I read the story. Jesus said, go sell everything you have and give it to the poor. You're moving your cash to heaven, right? Okay. So you move it by giving. Every giving we do, now understand, understand, understand. Ali Kabusa. Every giving we do by the instruction of the Holy Spirit. Take note of that part. By the instruction of the Holy Spirit. Take that instruction out. There is no treasure in heaven for you. The time is up. Praise God. But we're not done yet. I'm going to continue from here tomorrow. Praise God. God bless you today. Bye.